Hey everyone, and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today, I have a giant 3D printed helmet in front of me, and we're going to be trying out uh, a way to fill cracks and smooth out surfaces. So, if you've seen any of my other videos, you may have seen me use Bondo. And Bondo has been my go-to filler for a while. So if I ever had any areas that had cracking or I needed to add material to, I would use Bondo. And it works pretty well. Um, however, Bondo does give off some nasty fumes. It can be a little challenging to work with because you need to mix the, the hardener uh, in just the right proportions. And it has a relatively short working life. Um, this thing cures really, really fast, especially when you're working outdoors in hot climates. So it can be a little bit of a pain to work larger surfaces with this Bondo. But when I looked for different types of filler, someone suggested wood filler. So this is just simple wood filler that you'd find at the hardware store, um, used for obviously filling in wood. Uh, and they suggested using that on your 3D prints. So that's what I'm going to do today. Also, you may recognize this as the helmet from Solaire from the video game Dark Souls. Uh, this is part of a uh, project that I've been working on, so be sure to subscribe to check out how this project completes because I'm really happy with the way that it looks. But let's get into using some wood filler to fill some cracks in uh, 3D printed parts. But first, let's take a look at the wood filler itself. So you can see that it's actually a, a pretty runny kind of filler. It is not solid. It's a little bit liquidy. Uh, and the idea is you'll just take this, I'm going to grab some popsicle sticks, and we'll use that to spread this wood filler onto the 3D printed parts. Now, what I'm actually going to be filling, if we go back over here to the helmets, uh, there's a couple areas that I would like to add a little bit more material. So if I look at this edge right here where these two pieces meet, there's actually um, a step right here that I want to fill. So if you look at the bottom, you can see that this the bottom section is raised. And you can see over here it's not raised as much. Those two should be the same height. However, when I assembled the helmets, it didn't quite uh, line up exactly. So I want to use some filler to kind of fill this area here so that it's a uh, smoother surface. So that's what we're going to be trying to do with the wood filler itself. So if we take a look at the wood filler, you can see that it's actually pretty soft and it should be easy to work with. The idea is that this will dry over a uh, course of a couple of hours. It says for very light um, hole filling that you can sand it within like 15 minutes. Uh, but for any heavy filling that you'll need to wait a couple hours before it can sand. So it just dries uh, in the presence of air. Uh, you don't want to use this if you're in a very cold climate, but here in Florida, um, even in the AC, it should be more than enough to cure this stuff. So let's just get a little bit and let's play around with adding it to the helmets. So I can just grab some of this and normally you would use a putty knife but I'm just going to spread it with some popsicle sticks and I'm going to get it on pretty heavy so I can actually fill in that crack and hopefully I can start to contour it it's not the easiest thing to work with but if I want to get it up in here I also have read that it's really easy to contour with a uh, a wet finger. So I'm also going to give that a try once I give the popsicle stick a little bit more time. I can kind of use that little step uh, to help get that contour in place. So you can see me just kind of pushing the popsicle stick along that contour and really fill that upper area. I think that's actually this is actually working out pretty well. Now the real question is, uh, how well will it adhere to the 3D print, and also how easy will it be to sand? I'm not too worried about the the sanding part of this because it's wood filler, it's designed to do that. Um, but the adhering to the 3D printed part could be an issue. Because obviously this is not wood, this is plastic. So I also 
have a little bit of water here, so I'm just going to get my finger a little wet and use that wet finger to kind of contour it. And actually that works out really, really well. If I get a little bit more water on there. Oh, look at that. That actually smooths it out really nice. How about this bottom area? Look at that. There we go. That actually wasn't too bad. So now I'm going to let this dry. We'll come back to see, once it has dried, uh, how easy is it to sand and how easy is it to get the contour that we're looking for. I'm not sure if I'll need to add any more to this particular area, but I will need to add some to some other spots on the helmets. So let's go do that. Okay, so we have a little bit of the, uh, the wood filler here, so we're going to see how it sands and how it remains attached to the uh, 3D printed surface. But first, I don't really have a sanding block available, so use whatever flat surface you have uh, available to you and just wrap your piece of sandpaper around and boom, there you go. Nice flat sanding block to use. So let's see how sanding is going to be. And you can see that it's sanding really smooth. This area right here is extremely smooth. It's pretty dusty, so you may want to wear a respirator and do this outside because it's extremely dusty. Um, but it's sanding pretty well. And if I'm sanding an area that's uh, very thin, it still looks like it's attaching to the 3D printed part. I was worried that maybe the wood filler wouldn't uh, adhere to the 3D prints and it would just kind of like flake off. That doesn't appear to be happening. Even if I'm a little rougher. So there we go. Looks like wood filler is actually a pretty good way to fill in gaps on a 3D print. And here's another piece that had some of that wood filler on it, and it sands down extremely smooth, and it adheres. You can see all of this very thin area. Uh, the wood filler is actually extremely thin, and it's still perfectly attached to the 3D printed parts. This is what I was looking for. And there we go. That is an extremely smooth surface, and... That will be perfect for the finishing steps of priming and the sanding and you won't even be able to tell that this is different from the 3D printed parts. This is gorgeous. So if you don't like Bondo and the noxious smell and the, uh, the short working time and Bondo can be a pain, try some of this wood filler. This is extremely easy to work with and sands beautifully and stays adhered to the parts which is what you need for a 3D printed part like this. You don't want it flaking off. So, thank you guys for joining me on this learning experience. If you haven't already, please click that subscribe button and continue to join me as I try new things. And also, if you have your own secret products that you use for filling in gaps or uh, you know fixing warped areas or any other kind of finishing techniques, please leave them in the comments down below. I would love to try some of those out. So leave those in the comments. And thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching Hoffman Engineering.